journey into that, we kick off an important time of year, the beginning of our citywide and community education council election season. Today we're announcing the opening of candidate applications. I want to first of all thank Deputy Chancellor Tanisha Lloyd, Executive Director Dr. Christina Melendez, Deputy Director Jason Mazuka, um, and our entire search team um, is well represented here today. So we want to thank the entire search team for the work that you all do daily to support our city's foundation and planning, which allows us to develop the whole style. But we, and a special thank you um, to my understands the power of parents' voice from the classrooms to council chambers. Uh, she came to the city council directly from the classroom. I don't know that that's ever happened before. And, and so she has particular sensitivity and perspective on all of this work uh, that we do, and I appreciate her very much. I uh, also want to say thanks to the Gloria Casino uh, for being here with us today. And I'd like to, uh, to recognize all the other parent leaders in the city who work tirelessly to advocate for their children and every child uh, in New York City. So as I'm sure many of you heard uh, when I became a chancellor, I talked about the four major pillars that would really undergird everything that uh, we believed in and we were gonna try uh, and do. Um, and one of those core pillars is engaging families uh, to be true partners. You know, over the years across America, we, we always talk about parents and families being engaged. But, but, but we're not always true to that. Uh, a lot of times it's just a slogan. And um, uh, throughout my entire educational experience in leadership, um, I've always worked really hard to make sure that the voices of parents and families and community, because it's not just parents and families, um, there are leaders from our community, including elected officials, who care deeply about these issues. And, um, and I want to uh, do everything that I can, and we've been trying to do that in my first year uh, to engage those parents and families uh, in this entire process. So the kickoff to the Education Council election season represents a significant part of this important collaboration. Parents know their children best, and it is only together that we can help all children succeed in and out of the classroom. Everyone here today exemplifies this partnership. We could not do this work without all of you. Our amazing education councils are only one of the many uh, avenues we rely on to hear suggestions and feedback on what works for students. So first of all, let me just uh, say, what, what is the role of the education council? Education councils help shape policies and priorities for New York City schools. They collaborate with the superintendent in assessing the impact of the district's educational programs, and student progress. They support us in evaluating the superintendent. They serve as a forum for parents to learn about DOE policies and initiatives and to express their views and concerns through public CEC meetings. They approve zones for new schools and rezoning of existing schools when necessary. They provide input on DOE proposals for school closings and co-locations. They organize town halls with the chancellor and hold hearings on the budget and other matters where the DOE is required to collect public feedback. These councils are vital opportunities for families to use their voices and have a direct impact on our schools, our communities, and our children's education. Really one of the most beautiful things about this city is that we're constantly changing and evolving. And this year, I want to see new faces and hear new voices. New perspectives of what truly moves us forward and brings innovation and creativity into our schools. I'm not content with just the status quo. We, if we really want to change this education system, um, we need new ideas, fresh ideas, fresh thinking. And you don't do that by just listening to the same people over and over again. We need new perspectives. And that's what this is all about. I encourage every parent to consider this critical opportunity and take the leap into one of these leadership positions. Now is the time. 
Today, uh, we also are excited to announce that not only do candidate applications open today, but beginning this year, families who have a child in a D75 school or D75 program can vote for a D75 representative to sit on each community education council. It's a big change. This change ensures that the voice of the families of students with disabilities is heard on all of our local councils. This year's election is the second time that every parent can vote for education council members. So I strongly encourage all parents to consider running for a seat and all parents to vote in your district elections this spring as a step towards becoming more involved in your child's education. Any form of family participation in these elections introduces diverse ideas and new ways of getting stuff done. However, we understand that not everyone can dedicate time to serving on these councils. Council leaders are here to represent your voice too. Still, we encourage you to contact the education council members and share your thoughts, your perspectives, your experiences. Free and fair elections are the bedrock of our democracy. And I encourage you to take this time this spring to participate in this election the same way you would any other election. I urge you to make your voices heard. I just want to wrap up um, before bringing up our next speaker by, by reemphasizing that parent voice and parent participation and parent empowerment and parents as true partners is deeply important to me. This is a very large system and everybody kind of looks to the chancellor for all the answers. So I had a news flash. The chancellor does not have all the answers. That was uh, supposed to be a funny line. <laughs> Y'all gotta stay with me. The, the, but, but really, you know, I, all those years I was a teacher, I was an assistant principal, I was a principal. Um, one of the things that I considered near and dear to me was the outreach that I would always do with parents and families. I remember when Joe Klein was the chancellor and Dennis Walcott was chancellor. Both of them visited me at the Eagle Academy years apart and said the same thing because they both came to one of my Saturday parent meetings. And uh, Dennis Walcott said, are you having a concert? I said, no. He said, how do you have standing room only on a Saturday morning for a parent meeting? I said, it's part of the culture of what we've developed here because parents know that this is not just words for me. I need them. I don't just encourage them to be involved. I need them to be involved. The school cannot be as successful as it needs to be without them. And when Joe Klein visited two years before that, he said, you should write the book on this because I don't see many schools doing it like you're doing it here where you can have hundreds of parents on a Saturday morning coming out. And those were just our parent meetings, but they were engaged on lots of other levels. Because when you really put the word out to parents that they deeply matter and that they are real partners, not, not just there for a photo op, um, and they get that, and it's true, and it's real, it's authentic, parents respond in very different ways. So that has been the way that I've always moved. Um, this is a very large system. So I, I, I can't do it quite the same way, but I'm still putting out the word that this is critically important to me. That's why all the work of our face team is so critically important as well. Um, you know, the whole world, I always say this, the whole world lives right here in New York City. And the parents across the city, very diverse, um, and, and diverse in their thinking, in their opinion, their ideas. Uh, so there's no one answer when parents, when people say, parents said this. There's, there's, they're, not a, they're not a monolith. They have tre a tremendous diversity of thoughts and ideas and experiences, and we need it all for this entire system. And so um, I'm just thrilled that you're all here. I'm thrilled about this election season. I really want the word to go forward that this is important um, for parents to be very much involved, um, whether they're running for office or coming out to vote for those who are presenting themselves for these leadership positions. Um, it is very important to do this, uh, and nothing more important uh, as, it, as it relates to what's going on with your, your own child in your own school. And so uh, with, with that, I just want to take the time now to introduce our next speaker. As I said earlier, uh, she has been a, a real partner for us uh, in this work. 
And as she came into her seat and I came into my seat, uh, we both said, you know, in the past, it seemed like there, there was a built in a level of acrimony between the city council and the chancellor. They just do battle all the time. And, and said, that's not necessary for us to have that. Let's work together. There'll be times when we're going to disagree, and there have been. Um, but we can disagree without being disagreeable. And we should be working together to try to find common ground and find solution. I could not have asked for a better partner than the education chair of the city council, and I asked her to come now, uh, Council Member Rita Joseph. Chair Joseph, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Chancellor Banks, for that introduction. As we call each other, road dogs. That's right. That's my road dog. <laughs> um, good morning. It's great to be here with all of you today. I am Council Member Rita Joseph of the 40th Council District in Brooklyn and the Chair of the Education Committee in the New York City Council. Throughout my years as an educator, or for over 20 years, I first saw firsthand how important the CC is in getting involved. The first step is bringing about change you would like to see at your school. It is important that school communities are for communities, made for by the community. People often closest to the problem most already, like the Chancellor mentioned, already have a solution. As a council member, I attended CC meetings so I can get the right pulse on the issues that are affecting students and parents the most across this city. So today, my call to action is to get involved, get engaged. We can create collaborative changes, compassionate change across New York City schools this year, so let's work together and make it happen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I've been very, uh, very, very fortunate to have a, uh, a great team that I work with. In fact, I think it has been one of the keys to our success. We're, we're celebrating our, our first year, uh, we've got one solid year under our belt. Uh, I feel very good about what has happened uh, during this first year. Um, but I think one of the reasons why we've had a level of success that I can point to is because I think I might be the first chancellor ever who came into this seat with a full cabinet already in place. It's interesting when you, when you, when you, when you think about how I came. Usually a mayor is elected and they pick a chancellor in December you got two or three weeks to get ready, you just go into the seat. And then you're spending six months just trying to figure out where the bathrooms are and getting to know people. Uh, and if you're from out of town, right, you spend even longer than that. Um, but I was from this system and, and I have a, a, a wide variety of uh, experiences here and relationships. I know the city and I know the system. And, uh, and, and, and Mayor Eric Adams had told me a year before he became elected that one, he was going to be elected. And two, he wanted me to be his chancellor if he became elected. So I took him at his word. And in doing that, I actually started to prepare. And I spoke to every chancellor in the last 25 years. I spoke to every deputy chancellor in the last 25 years. I spoke to folks who had worked here for many, many years just to find out how this place operates, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, what are the challenges, what are the things that you have to overcome. And the number one thing that I was told from everybody was that you have to pick a great team. And not only did I pick a great team, I picked them and identified them months before I, I, got, I got here. That has never happened before. When I walked in, I came in with a full senior leadership team with me, and that made all the difference in the world. So we were able to really hit the ground running. One of the people I was able to bring with me, um, who, has, uh, who I've known now for a number of years, have worked with me uh, in the past as well, um, and, and she's the uh, Deputy Chancellor for Family and Community Engagement and Communications. She's changing the, the narrative on, on this work, intergov, everything. Uh, I, I don't even know your full title. It's just, it's, she just does a little bit of everything for me. And, and she's invaluable and I just thank her because all this work, uh, she is overseeing this entire body of work and I just ask that you, uh, you welcome uh, Deputy Chancellor Kenita Lloyd. Chancellor Banks, thank you for that introduction. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here today. My name is Kenita Lloyd, and as the Chancellor said, I am the Deputy Chancellor for Family, Community Engagement and External Affairs, and I am energized and excited about today's announcement. First, 
I want to take a moment to recognize our parent leaders, the Community Education Councils, the Citywide Council on High Schools, Citywide Council on English Language Learners, the Citywide Council on Special Education, Citywide Council on District 75, the PAs and PTAs, the President's Council, and the Chancellor's Parent Advisory Council, and all of the parents and caregivers who have entrusted the New York City Public Schools to educate your children. The countless volunteer hours that you spend advocating for your students does not go unnoticed. Thank you. We see you, we hear you, and we are committed to listening. In my role, I take the responsibility of engaging with families and communities very seriously. The family and community engagement team, several of whom are here with us today, are responsible for the essential daily work of engaging, supporting, and elevating the voices of New York City public school families, parents, and guardians, school-based, district, and citywide levels. I watch each day as this diverse and passionate team provides support and builds bridges for families because we know that there is nothing more important than truly meeting our students where they are and ensuring that they have what they need to ignite their passions, pursue their interests, and head down a path towards success. Quite simply, I view it as one of the most important factors in driving positive, product productive change in New York City public schools. That's why ensuring that genuine family and parent engagement is a priority and at the core of all that we do. It's a guiding light in this work, and serving our students relies on strong partnership with parents and guardians. New York City represents the largest and perhaps the most diverse school district, school system in this country. To truly engage families as our partners, it's vital that family voice is just as diverse as our city, our communities, and our schools. Often, our peers across the country look to us as a model of innovation, creativity, and inclusion. And I cannot emphasize enough the influence and expertise that Family Voice has in our school buildings. And it's vital that Family Voice we hear is, at, is as diverse as the communities as we serve. Our education councils are one significant place that allows us to actively engage and listen to our families as they advocate for students in their community Way. Together, we want to ensure that every student graduates on a pathway to a rewarding career, long-term economic security, and equipped to be a positive force for change. That's what this is all about, meeting students and their family where they are, with what they need, when they need it, how they need it. So today, I too am excited to kick off the Education Council elections across the city, and I encourage all interested parents and guardians to learn more about this opportunity, to consider running especially those whose voices and communities may not be represented. If you do not have the time to commit to serving on a council, I urge you to engage in the candidate town halls later this spring and vote in the election in April. None of this work would be possible without Dr. Christina Melendez, whose expertise and leadership leads this work each day. I'm gonna pass the mic off to her, who will share, and she will share more about the education council process in both her own words in English and in Spanish. Buenos días a todos. Gracias por acompañarnos aquí hoy. Gracias, Canciller, Vicecanciller, por su compromiso de elevar a las voces de las familias. Soy la doctora Cristina Meléndez, directora ejecutiva de Participación Familiar y Comunitaria aquí en las escuelas públicas de la ciudad de Nueva York. A lo largo de mis 20 años de carrera como maestra, administradora escolar y líder de un distrito, conozco nuestras escuelas y nuestros estudiantes, pero sobre todo sé que la clave de su éxito no se encuentra únicamente en los edificios de nuestras escuelas. Como dijo el canciller, la voz de la familia es esencial. Sabemos que cuando nuestra experiencia como educadores escolares se une a la experiencia familiar, sucede la magia. Los niños tienen éxito, no solo académicamente, sino que también se convierten en niños autosuficientes con alta, alto nivel de confianza en sí mismo para lograr sus sueños. Hoy lanzamos unas elecciones importantes que hacen que las escuelas públicas de la ciudad de Nueva York hagan precisamente eso, 
unir la experiencia de la familia y la escuela para aumentar el éxito de los estudiantes. Los consejos de educación comunitario son foros valiosos donde los padres o tutores pueden mejorar la escuela. Los consejos revisan los programas educativos del distrito, evalúan el rendimiento estudiantil, realizan reuniones mensuales con el superintendente, evalúan al superintendente, brindan información al canciller y al plan, el panel político educativo, sirven de enlace de los equipos escolares en las escuelas, aprueban las líneas de zonificación, llevan a cabo audiencias sobre las necesidades capitales, el cierre de las escuelas y uso de, la, de, la, de compartir las mismas. Les imploro a todos a llevar una solicitud y postularse para un puesto. El único requisito para presentar una solicitud es tener un hijo que asista a la escuela actualmente. En especial, quiero animar a los padres que hablan un idioma que no sea el inglés a postularse, recordándoles que su voz y sus experiencias son importantes. Las solicitudes se abren hoy, 9 de enero, hasta el 13 de febrero. Todos los solicitantes interesados pueden obtener más información en nuestra página de internet y deben planificar solo de 5 a 10 minutos para llenar el formulario. As the chancellor said, family voice is essential. We know that when our expertise as school educators meets with family expertise, the magic happens. Children succeed not just academically, but they grow into confident, resilient, self-sufficient, and outspoken advocates for themselves. Community education councils are valuable forums where parents and guardians partner with our schools to improve education. I am encouraging all parents and guardians to apply and run for a seat. The only requirement to apply is to have a child in New York City public schools. I especially want to encourage parents who speak a language other than English to apply. Your voice and experiences are important. Applications open today, January 9th, up until February 13th. All interested applicants can learn more on our website, and the application will only take about five to 10 minutes to complete. Espero que ver su aplicación, pero si mis palabras no los motivan, para que aprendan más a o a presentar su solicitación, tengo el honor de presentarle a Gloria Corsino, ex miembro de un consejo educativo y un recurso increíble para todas las familias que están considerando postularse. Gloria. Thank you for that introduction, Dr. Melendez. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Gloria Corsino, and I am the proud parent of three public school educated graduates. Mm. My oldest was a student in general education, and my two young adults, who are on the autism spectrum and proud members of District 75, is, are, are the family, sorry. District 75 is a citywide program found only in New York City and is a program that serves our most vulnerable students. I'm excited to join all of you here to encourage parents and family members to trust their expertise and use their voices to represent their families and their children in New York City Public Schools Education Councils. I had the pleasure to serve on not one, but two citywide education councils, CCD District 75 and Citywide Council for Special Education, and they were instrumental in my development of the parent leader I am today. I served on CCD 75 from 2008 to 2014 and culminated my educational leadership on CCSE where I served from 2015 to 2021 as the District 75 parent. One of the changes I am most proud of is the increase in private therapy rooms for students receiving counseling. Previously, students were receiving therapy in the hallways due to the lack of space and I'm proud to have been part of this critical change. I had the blessing that my children's parent coordinator saw in me the potential to become part of a group of elected parents who worked collaboratively with the DOE to improve the educational journeys of the students we represented. Our collaborations with administrators gave us the opportunity to voice our ideas 
and were implemented at so many diverse levels. This is one of the many reasons I am here today, to encourage parents everywhere to use their voice to effect positive change in their school communities. I am here also because I am proof that our voices are heard. Thank you, Dr. Melendez, Deputy Chancellor Lloyd, and the FACE team who for seeing and trusting us as your true partners in this work. And of course, thank you to Chancellor Banks for seeing family members, parents, and guardians as the experts on their children. I appreciate the opportunity to and look forward to our continued partnership. Thank you. All right, at this point, uh, we'll take some questions. Yeah. solicit or accept endorsements from political parties and party officials or from elected officials, including current CEC members. I remember this came up a little bit last election, so I'm wondering if you could just elaborate a little bit on the rationale behind that and like what would be some examples of political groups? Would union groups count? Would education advocacy groups count in that? Um, yes, I mean, all these are elected officials, just like um, our partner, Rita Joseph. Um, and so we, we are very clear in our guidelines that we do not accept, that you should not accept any sort of endorsements, either from unions or organized groups, that we don't want anybody to have an upper hand or an advantage because they have different relationships. We want everyone to have a level playing field in being able to participate and engage and, and be elected um, and so those are those are sort of the reasons and the impetus for for ensuring that. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, the decision to add a representative uh, from D75 to each uh, local council and just why you felt that was something important to do? Yep. Yep. Um, thank you. That was actually um, a decision by New York State Legislature. Added that to the law this year so that all um, D75 all councils will have a D75 seat this year. We are complying with that law and we welcome them all to the councils. And, and the rationale really behind all of it is, is the fact that for far too long our, our students with special needs have been left, left out of the equation on a lot of policies that have been developed right here. Um, when we say all students but then we don't include students from D75 and students with special needs. So, so the state legislature also recognized that and it's something that we wholeheartedly uh, support. I, I spend a lot of my time now Jill um, really going to uh, D75 schools, getting to know the folks who are working with the, with the kids and getting to know the kids even, even better. Uh, absolutely brilliant, right? And, and making sure that they understand that in this administration, when we say all, we mean all, and that everybody is a part of that. Um, and and you know, we can't have a, a school system like this and leave uh, any group on the sidelines looking in. Um, so so that's, that's really the basic rationale behind all of this. The fact that it's all electionally related, the legislature also has called, uh, is requiring you to expand the PEP, uh, the Panel for Educational Policy. I'm just curious what you're thinking as you're heading into soon working with an expanded uh, PEP for your, your meetings coming up later this month and in the future. Working with the PEP is always the best part of my day. So <laughs> let me just say, <laughs> I love it. No, no, but the, let me say this though about, about the PEP. I mean, you know, I, I love working with the people on the PEP. I don't necessarily love eight hour meetings, right? Um, that go into all hours of the night, but we've been getting better with that as well. Uh, the, the, the members of the PEP are some of the most committed people that you will ever find. These are folks who don't get paid for this and they put a level of uh, engagement into this process that quite frankly, I find just incredible. I really do, so I'm, I'm a big admirer of anybody who would even step up to run for the PEP. Uh, that being said, um, we're going to, it's being expanded. We're going with from 15 members, I think, to 23. Um, the mayor is adding an additional, I think, four seats. Um, and we're gonna work with all of them the same way uh, we work just as hard to work with the 15, we're gonna work with, with the 23. Um, the state legislature saw fit to, to do the expansion. 
and, um, and we're gonna accept uh, that responsibility to fully engage them. We brief the PEP members on all the issues, the agenda, but the most important role for the PEP member is to listen to what the community um, is saying. And, uh, and I respect that, and I'm gonna do everything I can to be uh, helpful and be a good partner. Um, I wouldn't be here if they did not listen. Um, I think it's honestly believing that advocacy never has to be adversarial. Um, it's the approach, it's bringing an idea to the table and having someone receive that message. And walking away without the response the first time doesn't mean that there doesn't lead a conversation to the next time. You know, you open the door, the segue opens. Um, I'm for living proof. I'm not a, I don't give up. I have two children with disabilities. Giving up was never an opportunity, but I had to come to the table with not only what I was in experiencing as a challenge, I also brought a solution to it. And this offered me the opportunity to do so. So I was blessed and I wanna teach that to other parents. Well, I had a great team all throughout my educational journey in District 75 as well. I mean, more, more importantly, the educators, the administrators, not only in my children's school, but here. I had an opportunity to come and engage if I was not satisfied or I wasn't completely feeling like I had been effective in advocating. So I made sure that I came to meet with the administrators here. Special Education Division, FACE, everybody, heard my voice and they engaged me and that was important. My children are now in day Um I had a great transition team. They worked with us throughout our whole journey and I was blessed. So it's really, I'm just an, an example of what, how it can work. It really can. Thank you. Let me, let me just say also that um, my goal here is for um, a, a system as large as this Success is if it feels like a mom and pop operation, right? It should not feel so large that people feel they have nowhere to go and nothing to connect to. A lot of the angst that I was seeing from parents and families and the communities as I came into this position, um, Deputy Chancellor Lloyd and I would talk all the time about the fact that people are worked up because they don't, they felt like they didn't have a voice or they didn't have a path to having their voices heard. When people feel like their voices are heard, um, then you reduce a lot of that animus. You really do. And people don't expect that you will always agree with them, but they want to be heard. Because when they're not heard, they feel disrespected. And, and that is when you will see the angst show up in, 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 in a whole host of ways. I don't want any parent to ever feel disrespected. Uh, I raised four children myself, um, and uh, they're all grown now. Um, but, but I was very involved in the school system and in, with, with their teachers and the principals and the superintendents and all of it. And, and parents just wanna know that, you know that when they have an idea or whatever their issue or their concern is, that it will be heard. And if it's a policy issue, that it will be heard. Um, and what I'm here to tell you is that not only are we hearing it, I'm encouraging it. I need it. I, I didn't come to be chancellor to just continue to play around in the margins and just do things the way we've been doing them, except try to do it a little bit better. I, I really want to think about and constantly think about how to reimagine the school system um, in a way that will really meet the 21st century needs of our young people. Uh, and in order to do that, you, you cannot do that just listening to yourselves within the four walls of Tweed. You have to listen to young people, you have to listen to teachers, and you have to listen to parents and families and community leaders. We're all part of it, we're all like pieces of a puzzle. And it only works if we're all if all the pieces are there. We're working together. Mike, um, I also remember from last election there were some.
pretty wide disparities in, in the number of people who voted in different districts, and they often broke down along lines of you know income, and um, some of the poorest districts saw like very few votes. And so, could you talk a little bit about how you're thinking about kind of addressing those disparities and in, in, in these efforts? Um, I, one of the, thank you for the question. Um, the most important thing for us in this, over this next period of time is educating parents about these elections. Uh, we're kicking off today what we call our Learn Campaign. We'll be hosting workshops every day um, through the application period in multiple languages. So what we wanna do is connect with as many parents as possible and families and caregivers and others to make them aware of this opportunity. Um, as we as we head on head out on this on this journey, so it really is about this next period of time for us is act, activating everyone around the campaign. And, and we've engaged our superintendents uh, in this process as well, and given them a charge to continue to spread that word. It's important to us because even the districts that have the most engagement in this process, it's, it's still a relatively small percentage of people. Um, much like, and it mirrors in many ways the way we vote in any other election, uh, which speaks to a deeper issue um, that we are engaged. When I leave here today, I'm, I'm gonna be meeting with a, a whole group of young people um, for something called Soapbox. And these are young people who are creating civic engagement projects, ways in which they can make their city and their world a better place. And they're gonna be presenting them. Um, this is going to be a very big deal for me because I'm convinced that the reason why so few Americans actually engage in the democratic process and specifically voting um, is because we don't build the muscle in K to 12 space. So it doesn't surprise me when they, folks don't come out necessarily and vote in great numbers for CEC elections. We don't come out and vote in great numbers for lots of elections because we don't see the direct connection um, to how it actually impacts our lives. And I think if we practice that more in the K-12 space. I wanna produce young people who will graduate from our schools who, who don't even question whether or not they're gonna vote. They're gonna vote for door catcher. They're gonna vote for everything because they recognize its importance in their lives. That's what's been missing. They don't recognize why it's important and how it actually affects their lives. And so we have, we've gotta practice that and build that muscle uh, in the K-12 space. Then we will find that we have young people, we have citizens who are voting for everything that they don't take anything for granted, they get involved across the board. That's, that's the ultimate goal. That's it. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank, you Thank you everybody. Thank you.